Okay, so you want to assign dates to their fiscal quarter. So you want to start in a separate table and you put the first date of the first quarter in a cell. And then underneath you can use the edate function. Returns the serial number of a date that is the indicated number of months before or after the start date. So there's our start date and we want three months on from the start date. So if I copy that down, that will give us the start date for each quarter. And then in this column, I'm just going to write Q1. And you can just fill this down and it'll automatically give you the quarter labels. Now the year, you could do like this. I could say if this value here is not equal to Q4, then return the year of this date. Otherwise, return the year of this date minus one. And you should better see why I'm doing that. Because, for example, quarter four, which starts in the year 2021, the calendar year 2021, is in the fiscal year 2020. Okay. So what we can do over here is use a VLOOKUP. And I can look up this date in this table array, which I need to lock. I'm doing that with the F4 key on my keyboard. And I want to return the value in column two. Now, normally you would write false or zero at the end of a VLOOKUP, but we don't want to do that. We want to find a date within a range of dates. Now, a VLOOKUP will actually do that by default. So if you don't use false at the end, so your last argument is going to be the col index number argument, then it will find the correct quarter. You just need to make sure that these values are in ascending order, and they will be if you've used that edate solution there. If I copy this down, you'll see that it has picked up the correct quarter for each of these dates. But I also need to display the year in this column. Now, to do that, I could specify that I want to return values from column two and three. And because I'm in Excel 365, you can see it spills the result into the adjacent column. If you're not in Excel 365, it's not going to do that. But what I'm about to show you will work. Because what we could do is then use the index function. So the array is the VLOOKUP function that's currently returning the quarter and the year. And my row number will be one because I want to return the first value that the VLOOKUP is returning, as in the quarter. So if I close the bracket there, you can see it returns Q1. But then what I can do is concatenate that with this exact same formula, but this time returning the second value. And then I get both the quarter and the year. Now, if you think that's all too much, what you could do over here instead is create a separate column called quarter and year, and just concatenate these values here. And then all you need to do is VLOOK up this date in this table array, including our new column, returning values from the fourth column. And you see we get the same result. So to calculate the revenue, I can just use a sum if. So the range that I'm applying the criteria to is this range here, which I need to lock with F4. And the criteria is whatever quarter and year combination you have here. Now, if I've created 
this concatenated value here, I can just select it there. But if I haven't, then I just do the concatenation within the sum if. So I would say the quarter concatenated with a dash and then concatenated with the year. So that's my criteria. And then my sum range will be the revenue values, which I need to lock. So if I close the bracket and press enter, and then copy this down, it will give me the revenue per quarter. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you next video.